It is week four of the Athletes Unlimited Championship season here in Rosemont. Game two of our doubleheader tonight to kick off this week for it's Team Lorenz and Team Foremo. Well, earlier tonight, it was Team Palacios led by Sachel Palacios improving to 4-0 as a captain her second week in a row after five seasons of playing Athletes Unlimited. The captain's chair suits her well. It was the long ball from Sam Fisher and then great defense all over the place. Aliyah Andrews making an absurd catch that she bobbled and then somehow maintained. They got the double play. Ertez and Leach looked really familiar with each other up the middle and comfortable there. And then Valerie Cagle, the former National Player of the Year, closes the door. She picks up the save for Team Palacios. They win 8-5 to five over Team Kilfoyle. And that sends Sasha Palacios to the top of the leaderboard with just five games remaining in her season two more this weekend and then week five next weekend she'll hopefully draft her team for the third week in a row alongside the former two-time national player of the year danielle laurie i'm chucky kempf and we have a little bit of a weather situation here in rosemont illinois so we are in a weather delay currently we are hoping to play this game tonight we're not certain at the moment as the rain has started to fall here but I'll take you back to that first game. We talked about it on right off the top tonight. It's all about winning now. There's a lot of pressure on captains. Sasha Palacios has positioned herself really well. I think that there's just a lot of momentum, and I can appreciate that, especially for a first-time captain. I think when you're in the driver's seat and you've never been there, you don't know how it's going to go down. But for someone that really strives in the team chemistry piece and really getting that collective unit mentality, it was pretty awesome to see. And they were 3-0 last weekend, and then they're looking at a 1-0 and right out of the gate. And they did so just ahead of the storm that is headed into the area here in Rosemont, Illinois, just outside Chicago. We are in a weather delay here in game two, so play has been suspended. We hope to resume later tonight, but for now, we'll go to college game day featured. We're back. The rain has moved through here in Rosemont. After an hour and 15 minute delay, we have softball. Game two of our doubleheader, Team Lorenz and Team Faremo. We had board games, we had camaraderie, and now we are back for some softball as we take a look at the leaderboard. Getting started here in week four, Amanda Lorenz and Megan Faremo debut here in week four, but it's Sasha Palacios and Lexi Kilfoyle who have moved their way to the top. Lorenz started this week at the top and she could very well be back there at the end of this game if things go well. And I'm bringing my partner, Danielle Laurie now. Amanda Lorenz has been shredding at the plate this season. And she's someone, in my opinion, that has a good chance at, at trying to seal the deal here, but she has to have a rock solid week four and week five. But as the captain, she's just been lights out. I mean, this home run, even in the loss, she had a home run on Monday that just you could tell she could take a breath. She was able to get some more points up on the board. She's just been a consistent staple in that leadoff spot for them. She's four and two as a captain over the past two weeks. Had not been a captain in her Athletes Unlimited career until this season, but she's been really good in that role. She will lead off and enters the game in third place. Also has Sydney Romero and Delaney Wiz behind her. The three of them in Series 3 combined for 12 hits, so she has a red-hot top of that order. And Hannah Flippin, Kelsey Stewart-Hunter, and the rest aren't too bad either. They'll look to get to Peyton Gottschall, the rookie out of Tennessee. Gotchel making her second start of the season. She's thrown just nine innings, Danielle, but a 0.78 ERA and a big chance for her. And she's been good when we've seen her. She has, and I mean, she's the curve backdoor queen. I mean, nine innings pitched so far. She threw great last weekend. It's a good opportunity for her to really go out and set the tone for Team Framo. And I mean, I'm gonna say it, I'm surprised Megan didn't call her own name, right? Like we're kind of in this place now with these pitchers where we're getting down to the wire, there's not a whole lot of games left and how pitchers get points is by getting outs. You're getting four points for every single out that you record. And the trend at times has been kind of the main pitcher starting on day one and day three. Didn't see it with Lexi Kilfoyle tonight. We do not see it with Megan Faremo here in game one. So we'll see what the plan is with Gottschall. But as we've talked about so often winning 
is paramount. So she likes Peyton Gottschall against Team Lorenz tonight. Gottschall, the 2022 MAC Pitcher of the Year in her final season at Bowling Green, but where she really made a name for herself was her last two years at Tennessee in that dynamic duo of her and Carlin Pickens in Knoxville for the back-to-back -back SEC champion. So this is Tennessee against Florida. Amanda Lorenz, one of the great Florida Gators for Tim Walton. Finished her college career in 2019. She has four top 14 finishes. And she is trying to finish atop all of them this year and become the fifth ever Athletes Unlimited champion. Third, start with a plus 10 with that walk. She is back into second place, and she is 104 <laughs> points behind Sasha Palacios, which for Lorenz could easily be made up in this game, whether it be as an individual stat point getter or in the win column as a team as she sees Sydney Romero come to the plate in the two hole. Popped up. Fading toward foul territory. Warren wanted it, not going to get it. Sydney was three for ten at the plate with two doubles, two RBIs in series three. Her sister Sierra is at second base and she was red hot, one of the best hitters, if not the best hitter in the league in series three. Dangerous if you get those Romero sisters going. That we have a couple sets of sisters, right? You got the Romero sisters, you have the Palacios sisters, and the fact that they're getting these opportunities to play with each other where they didn't get to overlap in college is pretty special. Sydney pops this up to Sierra at second base, right on cue for out number one. In the lineup is the designated player. We saw those two matched up in week one when Sydney was a first time captain, took Sierra. I think it was in the third round with her third pick. She grabbed her sister. Good spot from Gottschall right there on the inside corner. Here's Delaney Wiz. She was four for eight in series three. And we were talking before we came on the air. I just said, I feel like Delaney Wiz is kind of super underrated a little bit and kind of flies under the radar, but is quietly become one of the most consistent hitters in the league these last couple seasons. Yeah, she's been a, a staple, honestly. Was at third base all last weekend, but 308 so far heading into week four. And that's tough when, I mean, when you're looking at majority of the averages, they fluctuate. You'll have a good amount that are batting in the hundreds because they're only getting 15 games to realistically perform, right? So when it's all said and done, you have to be able to go out and have good ABs. And to me, Delaney Wiz is high on the list as far as consistency and someone that I would want on my team. They're really cool this week too for Delaney Wiz and Victoria Hayward to get matched up on the same team. That is two of the coaches at Nevada, Victoria the, Hay the head coach, Delaney hired as an assistant by Victoria in June. And so now they get to play together and Delaney Wiz smokes one over the player sweet and left. A two run shot for Delaney Wiz, her first of the season. And that was absolutely crushed. 244 feet. Wow, 77 miles an hour off this bat of Delaney Wiz and we're hyping her up for a good reason. I mean, this pitch is a little elevated, it's up, but right in her wheelhouse, 67 miles an hour does not fool her at all. Two run shot. Hey, you know what? Good for us too. <laughs> We've had a couple of those. Every once in a while, we're, we're on it. Hey, more times than not. Delaney just making us look smart right there. Appreciate that. Now Hannah flipping. This is a similar start to what we saw in game one. It was not the third batter, it was the second batter in game one. Skylar Wallace who hit a two run shot in the top of the first. 
Now flipping up the middle. This Team Lorenz lineup not bothered by that hour and 15 minute delay. Let's go down to Savannah. She's with Delaney. Delaney took no time to get hot in this game. Tell me about being able to bounce back from being in a delay and jump on in your first AB for a home run. Yeah, I think honestly sometimes it's easier to just jump right into things. You're kind of just like, you're not overthinking at all. So um, yeah, I just wanted to come out and score early for my team and that's what we did. So keeping it going with hand flipping on first. That's exactly what you did. Thanks Delaney, appreciate it. Yeah, of course, thank you. Real simple right there for Delaney Wiz and Majority of the times when you ask these home run hitters, it is very simple. Like it's not a complex, just waiting on one pitch. Like it's see it, hit it, swing early in the count. Just the littlest things. Stuart Hunter off the handle, two outs. In the lineup as the catcher for Taylor. On the flip side for the pitcher, Peyton Gottschall and Georgina Korik in this game, do you feel like the delay, you know, they did have some time to come out and get loose. Does it bother you at all, this situation? Not if you look at it at the angle as it's the same for that other pitcher as it is for me. And I think when you start to kind of get frustrated, that's when you start to get defeated. Listen, it, it is what it is. The weather is a factor. But if you let that bother you by having to wait around, then it will be a factor. So. I think, if anything, it's more so the connection piece of someone like Peyton Gottschall and Charlize Palacios behind the plate who have not played together this year when it comes to that piece, right? Like, you get these rookie athletes that come in that have had pitches called for them all year long at the collegiate level, and then they get here and they have to think for themselves. And sometimes they're just not used to that process. Flip to second base to get out of it, but two runs on the board after an hour and 15 minute rain delay. Amanda Lorenz and company get it rolling and it's Delaney Wiz with a missile to left field, her first of the season. Two nothing thanks to Delaney Wiz and her big swing, her first home run of the season, but Team Faremo, plenty of firepower on their own, led off by some lefties at the top, Sis Bates and Haley McClenney, but Charlize Palacios, Danielle, you saw her last week, one of the hottest hitters in the league. Well, and no wonder she got drafted first overall by Team Framo. She's someone you want, leads this league in ribbies, home runs. Right now, she is the hot bat, and everybody wants a piece, and I don't blame you. So, pretty cool last weekend, had the opportunity to play with her sister, and them get an opportunity to see it out one last time obviously with Sashel retiring so pretty special yeah two home runs last week one of them a grand slam drove in seven runs her three home runs total leads the league and she's got sis Bates Haley McClenney and Sierra Romero in front of her who reached I, I can't even count how many times because McClenney was the only one out of the top three to not have five hits in this order but she had two hits and walked six times I know. They just lived on base and the, for Faremo to be able to orchestrate this lineup with Charlize Palacios in the four hole could be really dangerous. But Georgina Korik having a good year, 2-0 with a 3-6-5 ERA, her third season out of South Florida. She's from Port Charlotte, Florida. Also plays professionally in the Japanese league. She is as good as anybody when she's on her A game. Yeah, and she's been very consistent this year getting a couple opportunities to start games, set the tone. Just what she wanted against Sis Bates. Pop out over to Romero at third. Cora talked a lot about kind of reinventing herself this year. We see that from pitchers. You and Amanda talk about it during the season. Like you have to be able to come in and do some different things because of how frequently these hitters see you. And Cora wasn't shy about that. It's the outside corner to McClenney for strike one. Yeah, you, you're constantly having to reinvent yourself a little bit, especially when you're playing in this league with the caliber of these hitters. You know that they're going to find ways to adjust game in and game out. So as a pitcher, it's really being able to be in tune with your battery and your catcher and that good relationship. And sometimes it's always a different 
catcher that you're having. So the sooner you're able to communicate with what you want, what's working, knowing yourself inside and out. McClenny fouls it off. Haley hitting just 231, but her on-base percentage just a touch under 430. She's walked nine times this season. Her final, see, just hard to imagine a world of softball without Haley McClenney playing in some way. This will be her final season. Finished up a very long, successful career with Team USA in Italy at the WBSC World Cup Finals where Team USA took silver to Japan. And hey, never say never. That 2027 20, year, she's like, oh man, I, I got the itch and I want to come back. And she puts in the work. She could very well come back and do it. We've seen people come in and out of retirement. It's just unfortunate with how the Olympics have worked where it's been out for good chunks of time. Ground ball left side, Romero. Low throw picked up by Stuart Hunter, two outs. How many could you have played in? Would you have played in four Olympics? Uh, probably not. I think that I, well, I might have. I could have balanced trying to have kids in between that's true, those. That's true, okay. Um, so at least three. At least three, I would say, yeah. Got three. Canadian bronze medalists here, right? You are one, Danielle Laurie in the booth. I'm Chucky Kempf. We've got Kelsey Harshman and Victoria Hayward in this game as well. Good little core right here we've got for Team Canada. Uh -huh. And that 20, 20 season when they played, we had a couple other Canadian Olympians. The Olympics had not happened yet, but we had Sarah Gronewagen, Joey Lai had competed, which I think was a good opportunity since the Olympics had been postponed and the Athletes Unlimited season happened in 2020 for a lot of those athletes to just still get out there and continue to play and keep that kind of love for the game because I'll tell you it went away when they postponed the Olympics. Romero walks on the pitch up and in 10 points for Sierra. The catcher number 44 Charlie Palacios. Here's Charlize. Drove in seven runs last series. Finished her college career at UCLA after getting off to a great start at Arizona. I like it. Georgina Cora going right at her. Painting the curveball 66 miles an hour on the outside part of the plate. No fear with getting ahead of one of the hottest hitters here. That one runs too far outside, ball one. Pitch. You can just tell the movement of Charlize's lower half, like how tough of a pitch that really is. I go back to it and I keep it low. Got her. Georgina Cora gives up a two out walk, but a very good start for her to secure those 10 inning win points. This to me is a vet all day. Georgina Cora ringing up the hot hitter in Charlize. Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball is sponsored by Dick's Sporting Goods. Well, some pictures from last weekend. There's three Florida Gators getting together on Team Lorenz last weekend. Charlie's Palacios all smiles, hoping to continue that this weekend. Well, finishing up night number one of week four of this championship season. We have the hour 15 minute rain delay. Team Lorenz off to a good start. 2 nothing off the starter, Peyton Gottschall, thanks to a two-run home run by Delaney Wiz. Oh, 
First pitch swinging into center field, wind blowing out, and to McClenny for out number one. Let's go to Savannah and check in. I think she's got a little diagram for us. <laughs> you know, I want to talk about who made the largest leap on the leaderboard this week, and that is Charlize Palacios. But I feel like leap doesn't even do it justice. It was more like a vault. Obviously, she was on that winning 3-0 team to pick up 290 win points. Her stat points were for 128 on the week. Obviously getting a ton of MVP votes. First place, second place for 100 in the category. And here's kind of what I'm seeing when it comes to Charlize. And these stat points, it really comes down to her 10 RBIs this season. She is the best slugging percentage in the league with a 731. And as I'm looking at these numbers and how it impacted the leaderboard, she jumped up 31 spots. That is a huge move at this point. When it comes to stat points overall, out of the whole league and the entire category, she's number three, only behind Amanda Lorenz and Lexi Kilfoyle. So I'm look, when I'm looking at major moves on the leaderboard, she's clutch, she's on winning teams, and she's picking up those MVP points. And I have to wonder if Rookie of the Year is next for Charlize. I don't know. These numbers put her in the conversation for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were kind of talking about it in the break. Like, Charlize, Lexi Kilfoyle, maybe, you know, Skylar Wallace has had some big swings. Yeah, you're right. Those, those three are kind of the top dogs right now. Um, it's that 31 spots at this point in the season. That is a, I mean, it is that close though. I mean, to Savannah's point, like that's a huge jump. I just think the leaderboard right now is super close. I'm trying to think in, in past years if it's ever felt like it's this tight heading into week three. I feel like when Muli Pola won it, like it was just kind of felt like it was a sure thing when we were heading into week four, where you're like, oh man, she's pretty far ahead. You can say the same thing with Kat. Um, I know Odyssey and Alyssa Denham were very close yeah. when it came to that. Um, AUX has typically been really, really close, but this is uh, for a championship season. This is right up there with last year so far. We'll see how this week plays out. Victoria Hayward at the plate showing bunt, fouls it back. 2-2 two -two count now. Talk about those Team Canada members. Kelsey Harshman's over at first base right now. She just had a base hit to get it going. Now Victoria Hayward right behind her. And Vic actually got her hand jammed up last weekend and didn't play for a couple games and is back here in week four. Takes it on the inside corner for strike three. Out number two. It's a really good pitch by Peyton Gottschall. This is just painting corners. And listen, maybe it's wrong of me to say this, but when you know someone has jammed their hand up or something, like it's uncomfortable to hit the inner part of the plate, right? So it makes sense in a situation like that to say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm coming at you on the inner half and I'm gonna see how the hand's feeling. And that's the mindset of a pitcher, but. That's why I like being on your team. <laughs> it's just friendly competition. <laughs> I need to find some of the folks that competed against you and ask how friendly you were when you were in the circle. <laughs> oh, nice play. Oh, and it's so smooth from Sierra Romero. The glove flip. I'm not sure if it can get any swaggier. Chucky, this is so good. Romo to Sis Bates, loving it. Two nothing here in the second inning. Team Lorenz leading Team Faremo. Our next WNBA game Sunday afternoon on ABC. It's Caitlin Clark in the Fever hosting Jewel Lloyd in the 17 and 8 Storm. Coverage begins at 3:30 Eastern, 12:30 Pacific. Caitlin Clark 2028, you booking it right now? She'll make the team? Yeah. Yes. If she doesn't, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you tougher questions tonight, this weekend, I promise.
I'm just not standing there. There's yeah, no chance for me. I mean, when there's a right-handed hitter, you feel a little bit safer, but still, I mean. But we've seen it more than like a couple times this season where the righties and lefties pull something into the dugout, and you know it's coming hot. We've Nothing's seen getting it a lot. pulled like that, not on a line. Jesse Warren down 0-2. Corrick runs one outside. front of that off-speed pitch. He goes down swinging back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Corrick. The right fielder, number 24. And such a good setup pitch prior with that curveball and then the off-speed pitch. The changeup just falls off the table. This was Georgina Corrick's bread and butter pitch. So good. Can the runs early help you like get in a groove? I don't want to say settle in, that's so cliche, but like, can it just give you a little extra confidence? Like I'm gonna throw this pitch that maybe doesn't feel great yet and find it? For sure, a little cushion always helps. It just allows you to feel like, oh, okay, if I were to make a mistake, it's not gonna burn me too badly. Um, and I think it makes you at times want to pitch better. Hey, my, my team score me runs behind me. They're playing great defense. Like. I owe it to them to continue to keep rolling. Claire Davidson at the plate, the right fielder. Rookie out of Duke. Helped the Blue Devils their first Women's College World Series appearance this year. Georgina Corrick rolling right now. Three straight swinging strikeouts. Well, and just based on some of these swings, you can just tell that they almost look like defensive, like hitters aren't entirely sure what's coming. So it's kind of one of those defensive swings, whether she's thinking the pitch was going to be a change. Now Rachel Garcia at the plate. Paints the outside corner, strike one. One one count. Rachel's one that I think is always one that if you're talking about who you think's gonna win, everyone always typically Rachel Garcia is in that conversation, still looking to get going so far this season. Ground ball left side, Romero to first. One, two, three inning for Georgina Corrick. She is rolling right now. The delay didn't bother her one bit. Big night earlier for Sam Fisher, the veteran in her final season as a pro in the three-run shot. I mean, this was just a cherry on top, I think, for me. Such a good piece of hitting by Sam Fisher. This was not a bad missed spot by Hope Troutwine. This was a pitch up above her eyeballs and earned herself the game one MVP, especially for hitting that ball up the middle off Kilfoyle that kind of sealed the 40 points, I think was very impressive as well. Let's see Megan Wiggins. As well as Skylar Wallace, Aaliyah Andrews. Those game one MVPs brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. The defensive MVP, a new addition this year, has to be voted on by at least 50% of the eligible players in the game. So it isn't necessarily awarded every game as Sidney Romero smashes one right back up the middle to lead off the inning. Her first hit of the night. Gottschall, a clean second inning after giving up two runs in the first. She had gave up a single, but other than that, nothing doing for Team Lorenz. Now here's Delaney Wiz. Already a two-run home run to her name. She's reached base in eight straight games. She's done so in ways, hits, walks, whatever it takes. We saw the long ball, her first of the season, her last trip to the plate, RBIs three and four for her. She's only struck out one time this season. Off the end of the bat, one away. Next up the shortstop. 
number 19, Hannah Flippin. Sierra Romero fresh off that smooth glove flip to end the second inning. Flippin takes the first pitch inside from Gottschall. Flippin from Bonita, California. Takes that pitch upstairs too. Former Pac-12 Player of the Year and All-American at Utah, 390 career average. Strike one to Flippin. Another one of these players who's played professionally in Japan. Flippin didn't like that one. Thought it was inside two and two though. Mary Lou Flippin was an All-American softball player at Utah State. They went, won national titles in 1980 and 1981. This is smoke down the left field line. Fair ball all the way to the wall. Romero into third base and Flippin has herself a double. That's good for 20 points on the leaderboard. Two hits for Hannah Flippin tonight. It's a good piece of hitting by Hannah Flippin. This was a backdoor curveball. I think that needs to be a little bit more on that inner half, and this might have been foul ball, but left a little too much over the heart of the plate. Some good momentum here for Team Lorenz, and my question is how, how long do we leave someone like a Megan Framo or someone on the bench? And I only say that because we saw what happened with, with Team Kilfoyle and her not starting herself, and then right out of the gate, they started themselves off in a hole in a five spot. So two runs is by no means too much for them to get back in this ball game. But if you tack on another two, and then you're seeing the way Team Lorenz is swinging it and playing together as a team, you don't want to fall too far behind. Gottschall just six of 14 first pitch strikes in this game, you're talking about falling behind on the scoreboard, but she's been behind in counts, which has been a problem. Still just the two runs here and one away. Runners on second and third for Kelsey Stewart-Hunter. A soft liner to shortstop back in the first inning, her lone trip to the plate in this game, but ahead 2-0. Ground ball right side, that gets through. One run's gonna score. Another one coming around, the throw is there, and the tag's on her. Claire Davidson with a really nice throw from right field. Palacios places the tag. And there's two away. The catcher. This is a good piece by Kelsey Seward Hunter. It's just right down the middle of the plate, but to me it comes down to being able to execute and make the throw on the money, and that's what Claire Davidson does. Perfectly set up for Charlize Palacios behind the plate. So good. Talking about the rookies, that's two rookies combining right there for a big out. There's 20 inning win points on the line here in the third. Team Lorenz already took the first 10 available in the first inning. 0-2 to Taylor Edwards outside. Edwards just hitting 185, but she's always a dangerous bat. Seems like at least once, twice a season, she's good for something really incredible. Had the grand slam to open the AUX season in Wichita, hit two home runs to begin AUX last year here in Rosemont. One, two from Gottschall. Gets the inside corner. Another run comes across Kelsey Stewart Hunter, the mom of two. She just turned 30, drives in the run this inning.
three nothing 20 inning win points on the line georgina cork and company looking to put up a zero here against team foremo in the bottom of the third inning in control of this game right now cork has looked really good she struck out three of the last four batters she's retired four straight She's just in a groove. What are you, what are you seeing from her? Well, uh, she's been really efficient with being able to get ahead with the hard stuff and then play around with that change up. But at times it comes down to location, and I feel like she's been spot on when she's been able to throw that curveball to get it half a ball to a ball off the plate, get some big swings and misses, and then gets that change up going. And when the change up's on, Georgina Korik is very tough to hit. Rick facing off with Andrea Filler to start the bottom of the third. That pitches inside and gets Filler. We've got the first baseman that Filler will go down by. Kelsey Stewart Hunter mic'd up in the field, fresh off the RBI single, fresh off turning 30. Happy late birthday. Thank you very much. Thank the you. mother of two. Are the boys up right now watching the game? Trace might be up because he's in his terrible twos or whatever they call it, but Hutton is definitely asleep. But I see. Uh, is Trace, who is your oldest one, as you just mentioned, is he kind of starting to understand mom's a pro? <laughs> Not even a chance. He thinks that when it's my time to hit, it's his time to hit. I guess he thinks we're at the same level. But go, go, go! to back base runners for so Team Faremo right now. <laughs> We've got Kelsey Stewart Hunter mic'd up in the field. What was it like last year for you? You took 2022 off for Trace, who you had. What was it like coming back and getting into this? And then obviously you had Hutton before AUX this year. What's that? been like to build up to those seasons yeah I mean obviously as you know it's like tough to be out here and have my kids out there um, they're so young so I kind of would be around them all the time but it's been a blessing and I think having so many like a village here at AU has been super nice and then I might have been tripping a little bit playing AUX after I just had my kid <laughs> um, I, there's a moment where I'm like dang my equilibrium is off maybe I shouldn't yeah. run but now I'm back into it and I'm, I'm feeling myself and we love that well, I was going to say, after your first pregnancy and you going back to play and understanding the grind it takes on your body, did you have a better understanding going in, trying to get ready? Even though he is only six months old, did you feel like you had a better idea what you were up against? Oh, absolutely. I think, like, once you've done it once, you kind of, obviously, as you know, there it is. After you have birth, there's the things you can't control. But going through it once and then I had a plan C-section the second time, um, just knowing what to expect, the things I needed, um, the support I needed, and not being scared to ask for help was like game changer. So I think just knowing really like changed how I came back and how I prepared. Says Bates at the plate, 0-1. Fouls it back and falls behind Cork, 0-2. Kelsey, it just, like, you've always made it look easy on the field going back to your college days, but how has your game changed? Like, yeah. You look so well, relaxed and calm right now at the plate. Is anything different for you from five, six years ago? You win. Come on, George, you win. Good. Out by Romero for out number one. I don't know if Kelsey so can hear so us good. right now. Well, can you hear me? I don't think so. Right, it's like breaking out on me here. Job, come on, George. Well, what I wanted to ask her was, it, do you see the game differently now that you do have kids? Hard hit ball, McClinney, not. Stuart Hunter couldn't keep it in front. Tough throw to deal with. That puts DeBoard on third base, McClinney on first, but there's two outs. What about you? You've done oh, that with the kids. Yeah, you definitely don't. You see it differently, I, w I will say that. Um, let's see this quick replay. I think you learn to deal with the lumps and bumps that come your way with it because life at home is so much harder than when you're in it at the softball field. I think you appreciate the game far more than you ever did. And I'm not gonna say you took it for granted back when you played, but when you have little kids and you're back and you're training and your body, um, you realize it's a gift to be able to go back and play because stuff at home can feel so much harder when you're in it. Um, I think more importantly, like it just makes you respect the game even more. Like, wow, I'm very 
fortunate I still can do it after I've been able to have kids and just a different mindset altogether. Outside corner for strike two to Sierra Romero. So one run for Team Lorenz in the top half. Georgina Korik, one strike away from putting a zero up here and collecting 20 more inning win points. They'd have the first 30 in the game. Well, and this is that time where you expect maybe that little change up by Georgina Korik. One, two count. She just spreads the zone really well with that curveball. Now is when you think of her potentially trying to pull what she did on Jesse Warren, that changeup on the inner half. Was inside, Sierra fights it off. One, two, ground ball, flipping. Korik strands a pair. Three straight zeros for Georgina Korik and company and 30 win points for everybody on their team. Three nothing, 30 inning win points for everybody on Team Lorenz so far. Team Faremo work to do. Let's go into the game now with the U.S. Air Force and Morgan DeBoard. It's really wet. A little water never hurt anybody. Man, my heart's pounding. Ah, oh, that's out. Let's go! Whoa. Dang. I don't care. We can score two. like that. Morgan DeBoer, like, hey, come on now. We can put two up. Now they need three. And obviously don't want that to go any further here, but love it. A little bit of a pitching change, bringing in the captain, Megan Faremo is calling her name. Three and three on the season, a 2.94 ERA. She was the first overall pick back to back weeks. Before she became captain this week, she rose 18 spots, and here she comes. She was a lot of people's pick. When they do the video at the beginning of the year, they ask the players, who do you think's gonna win it? We heard Megan Framo's name probably more than anybody. But I still don't know why she didn't start the game. Like, we're a contender here. So, because the real thing is, okay, you're going in right now in the top of the fourth inning, so does that mean that you're gonna get the ball in tomorrow's game and then not throw Sunday? Like there's so many, or maybe the, the plan all along is put someone else out there for two to three innings and then close every single game. But we're at the point in the season now where you can't really let a lead get too extensive because you have to come in and try to pick up the pieces or hope that your team gets back in it. And I believe Team Framo has the, the hitting to do it, but Man, watching Team Lorenz right now and, and just how she was able to get so many repeat draftees from last week and the momentum that they're carrying and offensively, like six to one in the hits department, they look good. In the center long run for McClenny, two quick outs here for Faremo in the bullpen, or out of the bullpen, I should say. And I mean, she had a rocky first week. And then all of a sudden, she just continued to get better and better and better. And that curveball is a bread and butter pitch, but she's really utilized that off-speed pitch and brought that up a ton, knowing, hey, I'm facing these hitters a lot. If I can't change speeds, it's tough for me to be successful. We've seen her do that. But to me, it's her confidence and demeanor when she's in the circle. She carries herself with this presence that I can appreciate. And she's the captain for a reason, but at this point, with only five games left. I want to be out there for as many of them as I can if if I have a good chance at trying to be the top dog at the end of this. She was so good last weekend. And even the first series, her first loss of the season was one nothing. It was a complete pitcher's duel. Alyssa Denham and Taylor McQuillan on one side, Faremo on the other. And I've always thought that's the toughest part about Heartbreaker. an athlete is like, you can throw great, but you can hit 
10 balls in a row super hard. If they're all outs, you still feel the result though, right? Pitching wise, 100%. You feel when you throw an absolute gem and you lose by one run. It, those are the ones you have to learn how to suck up sooner rather than later. But then it was her next performance where she threw so good and then gave up a five spot in the seventh. And that hurt because the performance didn't seem like it reflected what the score was. And then it almost seemed like she was just down, right? Like giving up those runs and finding herself kind of down in the leaderboard. And all of a sudden, just every weekend, she's continued to chip away and get better. And when her name is called, she's performed. And I admire the fact that she's a captain this week, because if you don't start well, it's tough to be in that top four spot. She's definitely got a chance. She's in eighth right now, but it's pretty close up there at the top. She's got Victoria Hayward down 0-2 in the count. Ramos thrown 10 pitches in the inning so far. Nine of them are strikes. O2. The word stays alive. Two line shots smothered by Sis Bates. One Husky to another. Sis retires Victoria Hayward. One, two, three for Faremo out of the pen. Three nothing, Team Lorenz over Team Faremo. Team Faremo though coming to the plate looking for some runs. I know what Daniel Laurie's gonna be looking for. We've got th four Little League Baseball World Series elimination games tomorrow, Woo! Danielle. I know you'll have them on. Yes. Canada, Puerto Rico start us off at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN Plus, followed by the kids from South Dakota taking on Staten Island, New York, then the Czech Republic facing Aruba, and we cap the day on ESPN2, Pennsylvania squaring off against New Hampshire. Now they have made it all the way down the road to Williamsport to the Little League Baseball World Series. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but someone stole my trail mix. That is upsetting. I'm devastated. <laughs> First pitch, ground ball, Palacios <laughs> retired. It was the one that had the like Reese's and the little pieces of chocolate that I just all of a sudden realized I left here last weekend. Oh, so it's yeah. a week old, okay. Yeah, but it's a, yeah, the target yes. one, you, you seal it. You're not helping the cause, don't. This is what happens after a rain delay. Dang it. Losing focus It's like quickly. the crumble cookies all over again. Oh man, don't get me started. Now Jesse Warren, she takes strike one on the inside corner. Corrick locating really well. It's basically a few ground outs, Couple pop ups, three strikeouts. Not much of a groove. She gave up back to back base runners in the third, a walk and a bunt single to lead things off, but then retired Bates McClinney Romero. Strike two to Warren on the outside corner. Well, and you're seeing a lot of hitters take that pitch for a strike when. Realistically, in these ABs, that seems like the best pitch that you're going to get is that curveball away to those righties. She feels like she's found the corner of the yeah. zone and she's going two, three, four inches out and tempting hitters and the umpire to make those calls. Well, and then that opens up the inner half, too, if you're able to get that curveball away. You can just tell by that swing by Jesse Warren. I mean, good to foul that off. You never want to leave it up to chance. Did you ever see something like actual, something visible from a hitter's body language that you felt like, okay, yeah, I've got him? Uh, yeah, if they're reaching or if they're kind of hanging over the plate, you know that opens up the inner half. Shifting in the box used to always get me. So when you'd have the hitters that would start 
back in the box and then all of a sudden like scoot up on top of the plate and move around in the box to try to get in your head. At the end of the day, it's about being able to think fast on your feet. So if someone's moving around in the box, I still have to be able to locate based on where I know that they're gonna finish. But gosh, like that's what makes Georgina Korik so lights out when she is on because she gets so many fouls on that curveball, but then it's the off-speed pitch that you're just like, dang it, like I need to be able to leave that because it's not a strike whatsoever, but the deception of that pitch out of her hand and the spin rate that it's moving at, it, it looks so good. Couldn't be more impressed with how Korok's throwing. You're not gonna see this team again, but I still feel like a start like this is a huge boost for your pitching staff for the weekend even for the other teams just watching right now to not be able to see some of these other arms. She's got Odyssey Alexander, Alicia Ocasio, so two former champions on this team for Amanda Lorenz, and then Catherine Sandercock round us, rounds out the fourth with Georgina Korik in the circle tonight. And Taylor Edwards, who we only hear rave reviews about behind the plate as a defensive catcher. 2-1 count to Claire Davidson, who struck out swinging back in the second. Two-one line shot into center field. That falls in front of Hayward. That's the first ball hit out of the infield tonight for Team Faremo. It's their second hit of the game. Davidson's had an impressive rookie season, her eighth hit so far. Homered and doubled on her debut earlier this year. Now Rachel Garcia, this game could get changed real quick with one swing of the bat. Two court jumps ahead of Garcia. Talking about 2028, these are two players that probably have their eye on that. Rachel already competed in the Olympics, Tokyo in 2020. I always feel weird saying that because it was actually 2021, yeah. but then Georgina Korik, who's very vocal about wanting to grow the game in Europe. She's a member of Team Great Britain. That is at the top of her list to do in the softball world. And if they were to make it to that stage, certainly would be, she would be the star of that team, you would think. I wanna see more teams too. Is it just me? Yeah, I think that they're only going with six. Yeah, like I but want more than that. In 2008, we had eight teams and it was awesome. Like yeah. you really could enjoy the Olympic experience. Every game, matter, don't get me wrong, but you could drop a game that you shouldn't and still be able to be in contention to make it to the medal round. But man, in, in 2020, one plays two and three plays four. So if you lose a game that you shouldn't lose, you are you can't make it to that medal round. Then you got to beat a team that you're not supposed to beat. So definitely more of a pressure feel in 2020 than there was in 08. But when you look at a, across the board, like, there was a lot of teams that didn't get to compete and play that totally should have. Like, I, I remember Venezuela beating us in 2008 and them not being there in 2020. Um, I think about China and how good they always are. They weren't there. Like, a lot of staples. And I mean, obviously you have to qualify, so that's realistically what it comes down to, but you're seeing a lot more American citizens that can tie their heritage to another country and be able to go play. And you think of something like that with Georgina Korek, right? In Great Britain. Oh my goodness. Taking cover down the left field line with that ball hit like that from Rachel Garcia. Yeah, I wonder how much more we'll see of that in 2028 if we do see even more players do that. You see it a lot in soccer. 
it's something that's like super common in soccer. Ninth pitch coming from Corrick. Off the handle, and Georgina wins the battle with Rachel Garcia. A two-out single comes to nothing. Georgina Corrick keeps it rolling for Team Lorenz. Two-two pitch from Faramo. Got her. Faramo, the fist pump after the strikeout. She is nasty. Goes down swinging back-to-back -back K's for Faramo. She steps up when the game is on the line. When I strike out a batter, I get very emotional and very hype. And so to describe that feeling is just that, all the fire. It takes so much work. It takes so many hours and pitches just to throw a strike, a good strike. So when I get a hitter out, especially in this league, it is like all of that work paying off in that one moment and I just feel all of those emotions and I can't help myself but let it show on the field. Yeah, she's just, she's a vibe out there. I love watching her pitch. This is how it happens for, for Ramo. Jumped 18 spots last series. It's all about the win. That's always going to be your big number. 590 win points, 254 stat points and 120 MVP points. She can still be in line for MVP points if she goes four scoreless here. Pick up a little bit to help herself out. Currently in eighth place on the leaderboard, but far from over. A couple good performances this weekend, and she could be right back in the captain's chair. That's the goal, right? You want to be picking your own team the last week. Last week, you want to have as much control over what you can as you want because you also have to think this is when you start to get nitty gritty with it but if you're drafting people that are contenders if I'm the captain and you're not do I play you <laughs> if I'm fighting for like do you start to think that way and I still would because game is game and it respects itself and what will be will be but I don't know if sometimes people think that way like if I want to beat you that badly, well, maybe I'll play and you don't. You'll just get the win and in, in inning win points, but you might not be able to help yourself out when it comes to the, the hitting piece. Yeah, there's a lot of different strategies you can go about it. And, and it's our job to talk about them. I'm not saying that this is how the athletes think whatsoever, because it's probably not. But I mean, if you're close or in a tight race, And Lorenz walks to lead off the inning here, and Savannah has more on Megan Faramo. Yeah, talking to Megan coming into this week, we were just reflecting on kind of what her body of work has been over the course of this season. And she said, you know, I did not have a great start. She said, I felt like I was playing well, but the outcomes did not match. Starting with an 0-2 record, she said, I felt like I could have really gotten lost in those stats if I'd let myself, but there was a turning point for her. They were having a gate where they usually ask a question to just open things up with more conversation on their team. And it was to describe your intention for this week. And her word was accountability. She said, you know, I could have let those things just roll off my back, try and soften the blow of how my season started. She said, but instead I took accountability for, hey, those are my stats. Those were my performances. And being able to say that allowed Meg to take back control of her season. She said that's been key for how great she's been playing in week three and starting off here in week four too. Getting some help from a great defensive third baseman, Jesse Warren, just making it look easy. Yeah, this is an exceptional catch by Jesse Warren. She makes it look so easy, but that is not an easy catch whatsoever over the shoulder. But I like hearing that from Savannah, just that story and just the accountability piece, putting it out there. There's no faking anything, and it, it, meaning you can lose ball games where you feel like you pitch well and you just own it, whether you give up a solo shot, dang, I wish I could get that pitch back, but I can't, we lost, it's my bad. But if we can't verbalize how those games are, are being played out, it's like you kind of like hide the emotion of it. But the older you get, you start to realize, like, and Megan Framo is still kind of feels like a rookie, right? 2023 rookie of the year, like this is her second season with Athletes Unlimited. But you start playing well into your 30s, you see the game completely different. 
thing too, back to what we were talking about with the captains and the draft, like we hear a lot of players say we don't, they don't look at the leaderboard a lot. Well, you know, if you're drafting your own team, you know what color is what place, so you know where you're at on the leaderboard going into the week. It's one thing to be a captain weeks one through three, but weeks four and five as Faremo gets whiz swinging, that pressure, I mean, you know how close you are, and it's hard to, like, and I feel like you've kind of alluded to the fact, like, you'd be looking, like, you want to win this thing. Well, if you're that close, there's right. some that, you know, it's just not going to happen, right? So, like, they're not thinking when they're 30th on the leaderboard going into week five that there's a good shot that they're going to win it. But it doesn't mean they can't make a good push to be as far up as they get they can to get paid the most that they can. But realistically, when you think about that top three, maybe even top five, there's some wiggle room to do something really big heading into week five if you're all pretty close. And I think there's something bittersweet about going into the last week of a championship season not knowing who's going to win, right? It just keeps keeps everyone on their toes. Every game means so much, every pitch. Sometimes it's not fun when you just know right away. Mind you, there's still a good fight for second place and third place and fourth being a medalist, but. Top four get medals. Anna Flippin, her best finish was 10th in 2023. She's at the plate with a couple outs. And a 1-2 count as that one gets away from Faremo. Evens things up at 2-2. Amanda Lorenz over at first base. There's 20 inning win points on the line here in the fifth. Lorenz is currently second on the leaderboard, 64 points behind Sachel Palacios, who we saw in game one tonight, her team winning and taking 110 of a possible 120 win points in that game. Three, two now to flipping. Flipping into left field toward the player suite and off the glove of DeBoard. One run going to score. Flipping into second. Lorenz is good to go. I think she's laughing it off there. She came across home plate. Okay, we're good. Amanda Lorenz is up and back toward the dugout. The first baseman. We'll see how they rule that. It is a double for Flippin, so that's a three-hit night for her and two doubles. Well, and DeBoard is going back on it, but I think that I think that has to be caught, Chucky. I don't know if I give that a double. I, I think that's an error. Whether or not DeBoard was worried about where the warning track was or where the wall was, the way that she caught it in her glove, it, that needs to be caught. Hannah Flippin starting to get going. She was really good. The WBSC World Cup Finals in Italy this summer for Team USA hit 538 in that tournament. And now they are switching it to an E7, so Flip it's still two for three tonight. She's hit another ball hard. And has her team in line for 20 more inning win points if Georgina Court continues what she's done so far. Flipping it second for Kelsey Stewart Hunter. It's a 1 1 count, two outs. Got to talk to Kelsey a little bit earlier in this game. Mother of two. Her youngest, Hutton, is just six months old, not even. Yeah. And she played a month ago in Wichita in the condensed AUX season. And she's had a good summer. Two one from Faremo. Good spot for strike two. Faremo's two and four as a captain. Spent two weeks last year as a captain in a rookie season. She picked two Bruins this week. Rachel Garcia and Charlize Palacios, both former teammates of hers at UCLA. Another 2-2 two -two to Stuart Hunter. Too far outside. First 
first time Kelsey has seen Faremo tonight. Had an RBI single off Peyton Gottschall earlier and watches that and knew it. Great off speed from Faremo, her third strikeout since entering in the fourth inning. Four nothing and potentially 20 more inning win points for Team Lorenz after that one run in the top of the fifth. Team Faremo needs to answer right here. Don't forget a special Sunday night baseball game, the seventh annual MLB Little League Classic from Williamsport, Pennsylvania at historic Bowman Field. It's the series finale between the Yankees and Tigers, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio with a special Kids Cast edition on ESPN2. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown on ESPN. One of the more unique events on the sporting calendar, the Little League Classic. Unfortunately, we had the AU Pro Games at the Little League Softball World Series, uh, impacted by weather, to say the <laughs> least, last week in Greenville. Andrea Filler takes strike two on the inside corner. Warwick looking to go five scoreless. She's got eight, nine, one coming up here in the fifth. 0 2 pitch to filler up top. This is two international players. Warwick for Great Britain. Andrea Filler has played for the Italian National League for a number of years now. That goes inside and gets her on the hand. She will take first base. And Morgan DeBoard coming to the plate. Let's go into the game with her right now. The left fielder. Should have caught that. Should have caught that. Okay. You went back so and you got back there way faster than anyone. Then I needed to, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. The first base man. Oh. I like it. I like that Haley McClinney goes up to her right away. And I mean, you have one of the best center fielders in the world that kind of has your back and like, hey, it's OK. Like you did this well and this well. Yeah, you should have caught it. But I think being able to like have that person tell you those things is really key in the moment. That's the beauty of having those rookie athletes being able to play with the vets and hear them out, learn from them and short term memory. That's a rookie DeBoard who came from Loyola Marymount, finished her college career at Minnesota with one season. Talking to Haley McClenney, who's out of the powerhouse in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, four-time All-American. O2, Corrick cannot get DeBoard outside. She fights that pitch off. DeBoard one for one, a bunch single back in the third. Just one hit entering this week. So a walk and a hit by pitch. She's been on a few times. Ground ball, Cork wants two. Not gonna be able to get the board regardless if that throw were on the mark. But they get the lead runner, one away. It's a good job by Georgina Cork to field her position well. Takes Hannah flipping off the base a little bit, just where she's not able to get the good throw down the line, but also understanding, I mean, DeBoard's got a ton of speed. Would have had to be real quick. Almost didn't look like she was sprinting at first, but she was at first base. Yeah. Plenty of time to spare. Just kind of gliding down the first base line. You kidding me? That's what I look like going up the line. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. In the pantsuit, too. <laughs> uh. Can we get your first to third time for uh, for tomorrow's broadcast? Okay. I definitely would say that I'm someone that starts off slow, but once I get in mid-stride, look out. So Sprint speed's good. Acceleration, not so good. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, I'd probably kill the 200-meter, 100-meter 
Not so much. Okay. Let me warm up. This is Bates pops it up. This is playable. Edwards back to the netting. Nice job to situate the glove properly. Two outs. If you had to pick a track event that you would want to do, and it cannot be going on that pole and jumping over that bar. I can't run because I'm not fast, one, and I have asthma, so I can't do distance. Oh, so it's just a real bad deal. <laughs> I think I've got to throw something. And I'm not strong, so it can't be. Like, I, feel, I don't know. Maybe Chucky the javelin. Could have counted himself out right out of the gate. I mean, I Just can't run. Just be real with you here. Like, if we're going to battle together, I need wow. you to know my limitations here. All right. I want to run, but I really don't like it. Hey, you know what one I, th I think you could do? The speed walking. That maybe. Keep those hips going, yeah. but both feet have to be on the ground. You can't, you can't be I'm lifted. I'm good at that, trust I could, me. I could see you on the treadmill, probably five incline, getting after it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I've set my bar so low now. I mean, you you are 30 now, so you gotta be careful. Yeah, low that's impact. That's true, that's true. Two outs for McClenny, fouls it off, one, two count. And I did learn that I was that much older than you. I was. Kind of hit me hard yeah. when we were in the room with delays and everyone around me is 30. I'm like, holy moly, something's wrong with this picture. Sorry about I'm that. I'm way older. One, two from Corrick. Upstairs, she's had six ground outs, four strikeouts, and four flyouts. A good mixture. She had Sis Bates has popped out three times, and Sis was red hot in series three. Just been in a groove from the opening pitch. Plenty. That one was grooved a little bit. Foul ball, long foul, foul ball. Into the merch. Like you need a camera out there in the tent Aww. for when that foul ball goes. That's a great ad. Like, people are going crazy over our merchandise and the kids <laughs> are running in there. 2-2, Two -two, slap left side. Romero to first. They retire McClenny. Five scoreless for Georgina Corrick. 20 more inning win points for everyone on Team Lorenz. tonight for Team Lorenz. We saw it in game one, one team taking 110 points. That was Team Palacios. Team Lorenz has the first 50 win points of this game over Team Faremo. Still not done yet, but some work to do for Megan Faremo and company. She's been lights out since she came in, gave up the one run in the fifth. That's popped up a foul from Taylor Edwards right on our roof up here in the press box. Ramo has struck out three. The run that did score was on what they ruled an error on Morgan to board out in left field. Edwards goes opposite field. Davidson retires her in foul territory, one out. Get closer to the action with your free unlimited club membership. Vote on game MVPs, compete in the AU Fantasy League for exclusive prizes and more. Sign up now at auprosoftball.com. Some loyal fans here that stuck it out through that rain delay. We've had some really good crowds here in Rosemont this summer. Erica Piancastelli, another member of the Italian national team. 0 for 2, struck out looking. She was the first batter to face Faremo in the fourth. One of the all-time home run leaders for Athletes Unlimited. She's 
She also plays in Japan on the same team as Catherine Sandercock. two pitch off. Talk about superstitions a lot in this game. Erica Piancastelli, it's the braid. I know. It's like the signature braid. Since I want to say she said on air 2015. I mean, and she does it all herself. It's a lot of work. Goes down swinging to Faremo, strikeout number four for her. Second baseman. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. Castelli in a little bit of a slump recently, over her last 12 at the plate. Makes way for Kelsey Harshman. She's one for two tonight. Harshman trying to Fix some of her offensive struggles. Hit the game-winning home run on opening night. That's right. Off of Megan yeah. Faremo. One-one. Gets the outside corner with strike two. Well, both these pitchers tonight, you, you look at Megan Faremo and on the flip side, Georgina Korek, they're really being able to get ahead of these hitters and then mess around. I think that, to me, has been the most impressive thing. It's like owning the outside part of the plate Framo has against those lefties and Georgina Korik with that curveball. No fear throwing it into the lefties, but getting ahead of those righties with that pitch. Since that home run off of Faremo, Harshman just four for 29 at the plate. It's worked the count full though here with two outs. Hit hard foul down the left field line. One of the questions they asked the players on their questionnaires before the season is talking about who's made a big impact in your life. Kelsey Harshman put down Kaylee Rafter as that person, said she is a huge reason why she's still playing softball at a high level former teammate with Team Canada, and now the head coach of the Canadian national team. 3-2 off the handle, right side, Romero is there. 1-2-3 inning for Faremo. Just one run allowed in her relief appearance. Well, I don't think we can talk enough about Georgina Korek and her performance that she's been able to have today. I mean, has only given up those two hits, but man, just lights out, moving the ball around, but getting ahead of hitters every single time. And when you get ahead of these hitters, it makes for a lot of fun. And that's what you've seen. She's really set the tone. I mean, you look at the strike percentage, how important that piece is to being successful. And I'm with you, Chucky. I thought, hey, let's just let her keep rolling. She's throwing well. Um, but they have decided to, to make the change and they're gonna be bringing in Catherine Sandercock who knows kind of that closer mentality a little bit. Three saves in a rookie year last year out of McLean, Virginia. Three saves already this season. This is not a save situation, but certainly a closing situation here with six outs to go for Sandercock to just put a bow on Georgina Korik. She has moved up 21 spots in this game to 12th place. Wow. There's still 70 more win points on the line, and there are still MVP points up for grabs, which I would imagine Korik would be MVP one of this game. Sierra puts that one into the stands. 1-1 one, one count. It's Korik's third outing with five or more innings pitched and less than three hits. One one hit hard and into the outfield, cut off by Hayward. That thing was 
screaming up the middle, and I think that's a nice play with Vic Hayward in center. This was a 69 mile an hour pitch and 75 miles an hour off the bat of Sierra Romero. This is just absolutely peppered through the infield. Victoria Hayward lays out, keeps it in front. That's clutch. We know that gets past her. That's a double. Good part of the order to be in right now. Charlize Palacios, 0 for 2 tonight. It was also, I mean, just to go back to Corrick being pulled, the three batters she would have faced in this inning were 0 for 5 with a walk against her. So it's not like this was the part that gave her trouble. Yeah. Palacios 0 for 2 with a strikeout in the game. 1-1 one, one from Sandercock. Good location. I mean, if you're getting a swing on a pitch like that, if I'm Sandercock, I'm going right back to that pitch. You ain't touching that. When Palacios barely touched that to stay alive. Sandercock put down that one of the things that people don't know about her, her dad, Colin, still catches her bullpens when she's at home. And she's going mid to upper 60s. I'll be doing that. Ooh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe in catcher's gear. Yeah. What's Maddie throwing right now? Not, not mid 60s. Yeah, you're, you're safe we'll say right 50, now. 51. Okay. Yeah. That's impressive. Palacio sits on that, sends it foul. So you have not gone to the catcher's gear yet, then? No. Still, I have still it. Safe. I yeah. have it, but I haven't worn it yet. <laughs> The day will come. It will, and more so the shin, the shin guards, yeah. and maybe the face mask. <laughs> On TV now, you gotta, gotta protect it. Palacios <laughs> keeps fighting pitches off. Still 2-2. Two, two. This is what it's all about if you're Charlize Palacios. I mean, so good, just battling and battling. Trying to be the toughest out you possibly can. Team Freeman wants to get back in this ball game. Got to have ducks on the pond. Going in on the hands and she keeps it. Keeps the at back going. Pitch number nine. Upcoming for Kat Sandercock against Charlize Palacios. Palacios hit a grand slam last week. She hit seven grand slams in college, including one on her senior day this year at UCLA that tied the game. Just one on the bases for her, but would do a lot to get Team Faremo back in this game. And this is when you know someone's swinging it well. For her to be able to have the AB that she's had after she did that big swing and miss on that one pitch, to battle back, going on the 11th pitch, and she walks and she wow. is fired up. And that's back to back base runners here in the sixth. Let's go down to Savannah. Well, talking to Kat Sandercock, I know that's not the situation that she wants there, but she thrives in these situations. We've seen it before last year coming off her rookie season with 13 of 12 appearances, a league leading three saves, 205 ERA. She wants the ball in her hands when the game is on the line. She talked about it's just different coming in as a closer. You don't really get a chance to fill out the umpires, the strike zone, even the batters. You have to come in ready to go. Let that competitive speed spirit take over and with two runners on in this late game situation I know she's leaning on that right now and the mentality that she has that allows her to be effective in these type games 
And this is a big at bat coming up for Cat with Carly Spade pinch hitting the Chicago native. Played her college ball at Miami of Ohio. Swings hard at that inside pitch. The second all-time leader in home runs in NCAA history behind Jocelyn Allo. She hit 103. Allo hit 122. Sheesh. 22. I know. Get out of here. I mean, 100 plus, you're talking 25 plus a season. That is a home run swing through that pitch, falls behind 0-2. Spade, the MAC player of the year this season at Miami of Ohio. It was the freshman of the year in 2021. Hit 36 home runs this season. Six home runs, 78 RBIs. Down 1-2 to Kat Sandercock. Popped up, playable Edwards. Got her. Big time. One out and the runners stay put at first and second. Now Claire Davidson, these two certainly would have faced off in ACC play the last couple of years. Sander Cox finished in 2023 her college career. Davidson fresh out. So far team for Amo 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. the sixth. Team Lorenz just five outs away from a clean sweep of the inning win points in the game. Ready. If I remember correctly, you did you call the regional? Kat Sandercock through the perfect game? Yep. To send the Supers. I. Yeah. We had the back-to-back -back regionals and Supers. I think that was one of the coolest performances, moments of the, you know, you always talk about Oklahoma City, but for Kat Sandercock to throw a perfect game. Especially since they lost game one on Sunday to South Carolina. So I think that's a good hold. So the pressure that Kat had to have felt going into that game um, must have been a lot. It was one nothing too, right? It wasn't a ton of run support, no. so it was high leverage yeah. the whole way. And they sorted out whatever the discussion was. It's a one-two count now to Davidson, who's one for two on the night. Hit hard in the center field right to Victoria Hayward. Basically didn't move. Two outs. Last chance is Rachel Garcia. Romero on second. Charlize Palacios on first. Garcia played for Team USA this summer. Gave lessons in the offseason as well. Into right field base hit, and they hold Romero at third. Kind of off the end of the bat there, Rachel Garcia finding a spot. Her first hit tonight. On this pitch that just bleeds a little bit back over the heart of the plate, right through 3 4 hole. You see where Pianca Stelli is. She's in too close to be able to risk it to send Sierra Romero home. 
Josie Muffley will run for Rachel Garcia at first base. Bases are loaded for Andrea Filler. She's from Fort Wayne, Indiana. She played her college ball at Northwestern. She's the director of ops for Northwestern now. Knows this park as well as anybody. Has a major opportunity here. Tying run at the plate. Filler takes the first pitch. First look at Sander Cock tonight. She's reached both times, hasn't recorded an at bat. Has a walk and a hit by pitch. behind 0-2. Just trouble tonight with runners on and runners in scoring position. Two for 12 with runners on, one for seven with runners in scoring position. They've left five on base, which isn't a massive number, but could add to that total here in a big way. 0-2, Filler swings through it. Sandercock comes up big and closes the door with the bases loaded. This is clutch. This could have been big. Kat Sandercock says, no way, shuts the door. Big time. Take a look at our play of the game presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Delaney Wiz, right when we were talking her up. <laughs> I mean, Wiz is this one right out of here. That two run shot was clutch and really started to get the momentum going for Team Lorenz. First inning. I mean, they're just doing pretty good, if you ask me. The amount of win, win inning points that they have up on the board, the, the score right now, knowing that they just need three more outs, it looks pretty good. Team Lorenz doesn't have a hit since the third inning, but things have worked out well for them, and here they come to the plate. Hayward, Lorenz, Romero, good chance to break that up. Why have they not had a hit since the third inning? Because Megan Faremo came in in the fourth, and yet they have scored a run. It's off the air on the board in left field. It allowed Lorenz, who walked, to come around. They retire Hayward quickly for out number one. Experience AU Pro Softball in person right here in Rosemont, Illinois. Tomorrow, our White Sox glorious sports for a good day. Go to auprosoftball.com to buy your tickets today. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> Hard hit and beyond the glove of Sis Bates at shortstop. Base hit for the leadoff hitter, Amanda Lorenz. She's reached three of her four times at the plate. She's having an outstanding season offensively. She has a good chance to be the next Athletes Unlimited champion. Her and Sachel Palacios, the top two right now. Both of them having great starts to Week four. Sydney Romero now, who's one for three tonight. Popped up, and that will get into the stands. Lorenz just 34 points behind Sachel Palacios. If they win the game, she will be in first place come night's end. And I don't think there's anybody that can really catch her at that point. If Team Lorenz wins this, Amanda Lorenz will be first on the leaderboard after day one of week four. to kind of fix a trend. The team wearing the gold jerseys are just two and seven this year. 
Purple seven and two, so this would be a big one for the gold team here in week four. Amanda's four and two as a captain. Ground ball, Warren going to second. That's airmailed into right field. Lorenz stays put. First and second now with one out. It's just uncharacteristic for sure of Jesse Warren. Just gets away from her. Hoping that doesn't cost him. Team Lorenz doesn't need to put any runs on the board to win the inning win points on the line. There's 20 inning win points on the line, but if they put up a zero in the bottom half, it doesn't matter. They win the game and they get those rollover points. The run would just be a bonus for Team Lorenz right now. More insurance and Delaney Wiz hoping to provide it. First pitch swing and popped up on the infield. Filler steps over the base. Catches it for out number two. Next up, the shortstop. Number 19, Hannah Flippin. They get Wiz, who's one for four, but had the big swing with the two-run home run. Now Palacios and Faremo are gonna talk things over because Hannah Flippin has been red hot tonight. She's thought she had a double her last trip to the plate. It ended up getting ruled an error, but She's reached all three times, two of them hits. She's climbed her way up into the top 30. Could go a lot further after this game ends. Ball one from Faremo. Really interested to see tomorrow. I think Saturday is going to be interesting just from the pitching standpoint. We talked about it a lot, but do we see Megan Faremo and Lexi Kilfoyle both take the ball on Saturday? after not starting tonight. I would be shocked if they didn't, but there's a lot of things that shock me nowadays, so. Who's to say that they don't kind of have some of the same type of a game plan? It's just more so, if I'm going down, I want to go down with me as the captain, meaning, right? So you look at Lexi Kilfoyle and opting to start Hope Trout Wine who got better as the game went on, but gave up a five spot in the first inning, you're automatically down. And then you say the same thing with with this evening with, with Peyton Gottschall, the two spot in the first inning, and then another run in the third, and then you're already down, and you can, with how Korok's throwing, it's almost that, man, that kind of feels defeating a little bit. Um, so if we're gonna lose, and I'm the captain, I wanna go down knowing, hey, I gave it my best shot, um, because I earned that right. Faremo fired up as she gets flipping to swing through it. Strands a pair. Well, she came in in relief, but she has been lights out. It's all about getting a little bit of emotion and momentum here. Team Faremo trying to fire up the squad. They need four here in the bottom of the seventh. Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball is sponsored by Dick Sporting Goods. We are headed toward the finish line. Just five game days remain in this championship season. Still a lot to play for. That's Tori Vidalis. She's in fifth place on the leaderboard right now. She's not too far off the top spot either. Still a great crowd here in Rosemont. Fighting through the late night after an hour and 15 minute delay. And now Kat Sandercock in her second inning of work out of the bullpen, trying to close the door with a four run cushion. 9-1-2 due up 
with Morgan DeBoard leading off. Line shot over to second. I think that was caught in the air by Harshman, but she'll flip it to first just to be sure. One out. Shortstop, 22, Spence. Sis Bates with one away. She's 0 for 3 tonight. Inside corner strike one from Sandra Cock. Gave up a leadoff single in the sixth and then a walk before retiring back to back batters and danced her way out of a bases loaded jam with two outs. Sis not happy with herself on that one, falls behind 0-2. Palacios, Lorenz, Kilfoyle, Wallace. Three of the top four have remained the same. Skylar Wallace has jumped up into fourth place. Faremo is down to seventh. Sis swings through it, two outs quickly for Kat Sandercock. It's a good job by Kat Sandercock. One pitch, one out with DeBoard and then works it. 0-2 to Sis Bates, climbs the ladder. Any doubt for your MVP one tonight? No, I'm going Korok all the way. Could be 60 points for Georgina Korok on top of all the outs and all the win points. She's already in 12th. That's a name you could see. I don't know the math off the top of my head, but I'm thinking top seven or eight for wanna, sure tomorrow you don't want to pull an eric collins just start to do the math on air and i think i've love done it when he does yeah it. i think <laughs> i've done it yeah no one wants to hear that especially people that know math or are paying attention <laughs> to the leaderboard <laughs> she'll definitely be in seventh at least that's what i'll that's what i'll say sticking to it yeah Good spot on the outside corner, strike one to McClenny. Bates and McClenny, who were just so good in series three, are a combined 0 for 7 tonight. That's how good Corrick and now Sandercock have been. The 0 for 6 start was all against Corrick. Sandercock goes back to the outside corner. And this could do it. Two, two, up and away. <laughs> McClenny trying to keep it alive, three, two, ground ball left side, it gets into left field. McClenny holds up at first. Still could be a valuable run whether you get Four or not to keep it going. One run alone would at least get you 20 inning win points. Well, and she works it to that 3 2 count and just pokes it right down the left field line, sneaks it by Sydney Romero. And now Sierra Romero. She was that leadoff single in the sixth off Sandercock, but this one much slowly, slower to Harshman to end the game. It's getting late, Danielle. That's going to do it. It's probably right. It's probably about time. That's the fifth shutout of the season. Corrick and Sandercock combining just a pitching masterclass from Georgina Corrick. Yeah, that was really cool to see. You don't see shutouts happen often, but I love being witness to them because it is a thing of beauty, no doubt. Week four underway. How about two teams taking almost all the win points, all but 10 of the possible win points going to Team Palacios and Team Lorenz here on opening day of week four. For Daniel Laurie, Savannah Collins, Casey Carter, Aaron Angel, and our entire awesome crew fighting through the delay, I'm Chucky Kemp. See you tomorrow.